Hi, my name's Mike. In this video, I'm going to be circuitventing this Yamaha DD6 drum machine to add a variable pitch control. Alright, let's get started. Okay, to do this pitch modification, we are going to be using this small board called an LTC1799 Precision Oscillator. This one is from circuitbenders.co.uk and is kind of meant for circuit bending. You can also find other ones on Amazon that look like this. Uh, take a little bit more work to get it to work correctly for circuit bending, so this is the better option. It's, uh, it's pretty simple. All we're going to be using is that board. One control pot to control adjust the frequency, and then um, a toggle switch that will select between this timing and the original stock timing. Uh, pretty simple, we're just going to find a 5 volts inside the unit that is switched. It turns on and off with that switch, feed it into this board. The control pot wires into that board. There's a couple jumpers depending on uh, the frequency, um, where you want how where you want the range of the frequency. You can adjust with here, and then the output goes out to um, the the main IC inside the board. All right, let's get this opened up and started. Okay, at first glance, it kind of looks like maybe there was something burnt out here. It's all burnt, and there's some corrosion on top of this vertical IC here. Um, but I think what happened is that there was just batteries left in, and they corroded and leaked out over here. Because uh, this looks like the power supply uh, audio amplifier section, and the unit works fine. Volume and power all work fine, so I'm not going to be too concerned about that. Okay, so now we just need to find the the timing oscillator, the original clock. Um, I know it's not here, this is the power switch. I know it's not up here, this is the audio amplifier power supply area. And the clocks are always connected to one of the main ICs, which are there, there, and here. So right away I can see CL2 and CL1. Um, one will probably change the timing of how the unit operates, which we don't really want to do, which I'm thinking that's that one. That's probably that IC. And I'm thinking this one will probably change the timing of the sound. We'll, kind of, we'll like either compress or stretch the sound um, or the timing of the of the rhythm. Before I actually remove the crystal uh, oscillator here, or whatever it's called, uh, I'm just going to mark both uh, the device and the board so I know which orientation it is. Since it is three pins, I'm going to have to reinstall it. So this side here matches up with that side there. All right. So now we can look at the bottom of the board here. Right there. So it looks like it's right here. So we are right here, these three pins right there. So I'm going to go ahead and just mark one of them so I know where. I just removed the crystal oscillator, the original stock one from the board here. Um, but now our problem is that there's three pins here, but our precision oscillator only has one output. So what do we do here? If we zoom in here on the board, we can see that these, this is where that pin, uh, I mean, 
where this device was originally mounted, these three holes. Uh, the hole with the black line corresponds to the pin that I marked on the other side. And if you see, that one goes right to that main IC. So, more than likely, that is our, our, uh, our control pin that we need to interrupt. So to do that, I'm going to take and bend that leg up and then reinstall. I'm going to reinstall this back in place in the same orientation with a wire in place, well, a wire connected to the board and a wire connected to this running out to a toggle. And I'll show in detail better. Next, I need to figure out where I'm going to connect my 5 volts and ground. So I will use my voltage meter here and connect black to ground. Um, actually, the unit is off, so let's turn it on. Now, this is the voltage regulator here. I'm sure I can get 5 volts off of this one. I can. Um, I just don't want to go directly off of here, so you know, we can find other jumpers around here. And we have 5 volts right here, 5.1. And just to confirm that, when I switch that off, we lose voltage. And back on, 5 volts is back. So that will work good for our 5 volts. Um, turn it back off. Now to find my ground, I'm, I could obviously just connect right here, um, but I want to do something closer to where the board will be. So I'm just going to go to continuity testing and find where our ground is at. First one right there, also right there. So I'm going to use that one instead of just uh, tapping off over at the battery. So ground and uh, plus. Now I'm going to wire up the control switch and how this will work is that the, the yellow wire which basically connects directly to the IC will go to the center of the toggle. The blue is the original uh, crystal on one side of the toggle while the purple on the other side that leads to the LTC uh, timing oscillator board. And now I'm just going to connect the two orange wires to the 100k pot. I just kind of cleaned all the wires up and trimmed them all to length. I haven't drilled the holes yet because I kind of would like to do that last. I want to make sure and test everything, make sure it's functional. Um, for attaching the LTC board onto a small board, I'm going to be using these little 4-pin headers that I trimmed. Um, so now I can land all of these wires based off of this.
And now for a test before we drill any holes. Okay, so that's the stock stock timing. Sounds like it's working. Fast. Slow. Well, unfortunately, I just discovered my first mistake. Um, the the this controller works correctly as it should, but I was assuming that since it controlled the speed, it would also control the the playback speed of the samples, which is what I wanted. This one only controls the tempo of the pre-recorded rhythms, uh, so it looks like probably this um, clock uh, clock two is the one I want. So I'm going to take apart, uh, take this board back out, reconnect this back to the original way, and then move these control wires over to the other clock. Same same exact process, just the the wrong the wrong clock. The first uh, three pin clock was right over here, and then this new one that I think is the correct one now is right here. It's it's only the two pin. Um, I'm still going to do the same process, just lifting one pin. I'll, I'll remove both both solder joints, remove the device, bend one leg up, and put it back in, and then uh, solder one wire through and one wire to that bent up leg. Same exact process as before. So the legs on this one are just a little too short to bend over and then still have the other leg get through uh, the board. So instead I'm going to solder a little jumper wire onto, uh, onto the, the leg, but still the same idea. Now all I got to do is put a little bit of heat shrink over the crystal, uh, figure out where I'm going to mount the board in here, and then drill my two holes. I already have them marked out right there. Okay, just a quick little recap. We have the LTC 1799 board here with the orange wires going to the 100K uh, potentiometer that controls the frequency. The toggle switch with the yellow going directly to the board that connects to the other side on the uh, trace that connects directly to IC2. The blue connects to the original crystal here um, that I have heat shrunk with a little jumper back to the board and then the purple leads back to the LTC out uh, the LTC out here I am running this board in the open configuration so that I don't have any jumpers I messed around and tried different ones that seemed like it was the best the best fit and there's also a little adjustment pot on this board you can kind of adjust the, the upper, li upper upper limit I did leave some space here on the board for some future mods as well as left this space open here. And I think that's about Oh, we have the, the ground connected here and the power connected, 5 volt switched power there. So 
so I closed up the case and added a large knob and I think this modification is all complete. Uh, the switch is orientated so in the down position is the stock timing and in the up is the variable timing. So we'll first, first hear the stock sounds. Uh, please join me for part two of this video where I will show you how to add a gate input to the, each of the four pads so then we can externally control it from something like a BeatStep Pro or something like that. And if you've made it this far, if I, can I ask you a favor for me? Can you please like and subscribe to the video? It would really help the YouTube algorithm. I'm trying to grow the channel. Um, but that's it for now, and thanks for watching.